We end this series of Dave Salmon, A Man and His Camera, Part 1 Railways, with a selection of photographs that Dave captured at the Bluebell Railway, at Ride Isle of Wight before the end of steam, and post-steam era photographs on and around the Guildford area and Old Oak Common. There are also some audio files featuring Dave that were captured by Mick Stone on one of the days that we visited him before he sadly passed away on the 9th of July 2015.
As David had been a fireman at Guildford MPD in the 1950s, it was important to capture some of his memories on tape. My good friend Mick Stone and I would arrange to visit Dave at his home in Artillery Road. As Dave didn't have a telephone, Mick would post a note through his letterbox. Dave would then reply with a note through Mick's letterbox. Luckily, Mick lived in the same road, and then Mick would contact me to let me know of the arrangements that had been made. We would then meet up on the arranged date and time, and to prompt Dave's memory, I would show him a copy of the seniority sheet from Guildford Loco, listing drivers and firemen that he would have worked with, and also show him Lou Waldridge's DVD, Guildford and Engineman's View. Here, in Dave's unforgettable dulcet toned voice, are just a few of his reminiscences. When we used to go on holiday, one year we used to go down to Torquay for a fortnight. Another year we used to go up to um, Great Yarmouth for a fortnight. Right. And then the next year we go back down to Torquay, and then we go back up to Great Yarmouth. Both of the places we used to go to for holiday was just more and more bloody spot. The pencil and the bloody book and a bag. Stay on the bloody station platform all day. You would have seen you down at Newton Abbott, because Torquay was then just up road. Book. We used to go to Torquay. Newton Abbott was then just up there. Bloody fair old place that was for steam and all the bloody engines that was there. Big shit that was. Yeah. Because the other one we used to go to, Jeff, which I used to love, was when we used to go on holiday to Great Yarmouth. I think the lady was called Mrs. Gott that used to take us in before, right? And we used to see her every other year, and she was ever so sweet. They used to put mum and dad in one bedroom. Me, I went into a little back bedroom at the back of the house. But when I looked out the window, I thought, this is interesting. I saw a bloody B-17 go, and I thought, hello, what's that bloody main lightning? Mm. And because later on, I met an elderly bloke and he told me there was three engine sheds at Great Yarmouth. The lower stuff, town, Vauxhall. Well, and there was three stations there as well. I don't know what happened to all the bloody engines. When, when you left school, what, what age were you when you left school? Fifteen. Fifteen, yeah. same as I was then. And then you, what, what school did you go to? I went to Sandfield, did an infant school. Right. I went over the other side of the road. Uh, uh, the infant school was boys and girls. Over the other side was the um, Sandfield Boys School, which was from the uh, ages of uh, 8 to 11. And uh, then I went from there to 11. I went to uh, Stoke Church of England School um, in uh, Marvinville Road. That's where I stayed from 11 to 15. So the employment officer probably came to you at the school yeah. and said to you, what, what would you like to do? What yeah. did you say to him? Did you well, say you wanted to be a train driver? Well, or? you see, when I first started out, to actually, I went and applied for a job for uh, panel beams and welding. <laughs> and it was for um, a pantole company over uh, Burfham. I was a year for a month. I left it. So I was on floaties. I'm going to go get a different job. So I did. I went to any and I got Stanley Wolf, Mr. Stubble, you know, said he's the foreman for the thing, which I did. He said, you're, um, you're here from us very, very shortly. When they sent me a reply, uh, and told me where to go, and they sent me a ticket to travel up to London Bridge and back again, okay. uh, I went up to uh, London Bridge, platform one upstairs, turn left to the medical centre. And what was the doctor's name there? You and the, doctor, the, doctor's the doctor's name was Dr. Watt, because he said, if you're going to work on the steam engines, Mr. Salmon, he said, you should remember my surname. I invented the, one of the engineers who invented the steam engine, Dr. Watt. Yeah, yeah. OK. Now, when you went to the, when you went to the, the logo and you were with Mr. Starbold, were you given any form of written test at all? Were, was, were, you, were you asked to spell any words? No. No? OK. Only one of, one of the R, yes. No. Well, one, one of my colleagues, strangely enough, was. He, no, he was asked to spell engine. At, at in that, whatever. Yeah, yeah. We've got yeah. some fun paragraph there as well. Um, uh, Jeff, um, place where he went on loan. There was one depot in that book he put down there. I never went on loan to that. I went to Redden on loan. I went to Falk on loan, I went to Dine Arms on loan, I went to Stuart's Lane on loan, 
I went the heathergreen on loan, and then I went the flats on loan, and I went the baking stoke on loan. <laughs> and Reading, was it? Yeah, Reading was the first one. Ready. Okay. But that was gone five, five, seven, eight, yeah, so it's gone loan. Okay. So when you first started cleaning on your first days, can you remember what engine you, first oh. engine you cleaned? You cleaned? Well, I know one, I know one of my first engines was a U-class engine, because I was up on the top of the frame inch, yes. down, uh, oh, it's down, down four, because that's when the big bloke come up and spoke, no, no, not the first day, the third day, when I was down the shed, doing my cleaning with my bucket, with me oil, with me paraffin, one couple of rags, and a bundle of rags here for wiping, two gloves, just you had your own yeah. boots and all that's right. So who was in charge of the cleaners in those days? The charge of the cleaners in those days, Jeff was a man called Mr. Reginald Fun. Right, okay. That's it. So he was he was uh, yeah, he was always on the scrounge always on the scrounge for a cup of bottle of fag. <laughs> <laughs> if you smoke you was hard luck because he always used to copy you. Yeah, yeah he did. I agree. He, he um now when when you were allotted various engines to clean, yeah. um, there was another person, wasn't there, in charge of the weaver? Was, was it uh, Jack yeah. Robbins? Our old friend, Cock Robbins. Yeah. In other words, his name was Jack Robbins. Okay. He always walked along as if he got two wooden legs. <laughs> well, in fact, he had a bolt on his leg, didn't he? His leg, didn't he? He had a sort of a long, like a sort of a, um, we call it like a sort of a monster. Yeah. You know, with his legs. Because he, he had, you know, the last legs were stiff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we so won't uh, plan it on. When you operated this weaver, yeah. um, what, what, what were the sort of dangers involved with that? I mean, where... Well, one of your main, one of your main dangers, uh, uh, Jeff, was uh, being hot caustic soda water. Watch the bloody rubber pipe, that bloody burst or split, because there was pressure in there, and it got a, it had a coil of um, um, water, strong water, coiled, coiled all the way down this rubber hose, all the way down. Fit like a pet pipe. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. 
was represent you all close to full. Yeah, so what time did you get to the shed then, if you left Oh, well, we've, we've left Gilbert at 18. And we've reached out there, you always allow two hours. So who, yeah, who Mr. 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 Bollard was our gentleman. Was it Bollard or Bollard? Bollard, Mr. Bollard. Bollard, that's it, yeah. Mr. Mr. Bollard. George With Bollard. the glasses. Yeah. Okay. We had him on Mondays and Tuesdays. Every day of a out of ship. And on Wednesdays, he would come down to Guildford and us same six lads would go to the school to do the practical side. Um, we used to have the Ulfish Hut along Guildford Park Road. That whole old wooden building, the way along, we used for um, bingo, um, jumble sales, all sorts of things. And the union meeting as well, they used to hold it there until for some unknown reason. It moved from there and it went up to the trade and labour club up the belt. Did they used to have the improvement class? That's it. The Your improvement yeah. class as well up there. You're yeah. right. Okay. I don't know. I've got, you know, I've got good knowledge from the drivers I work with.
tunnel. You come back uh, again, take the road, and you'd be coming up the running road to go around to the Goldwyn stage. And I'll get the camera ready to dive back. And uh, I see you, the driver was sticking his head out. I said, Good afternoon, driver Brown. Well, I said, Give us a smoke. When you said, Give us a smoke, he chops out his teeth out. He does it now. And as you go in the slowly, tender first, he'll down on the bloody track, in amongst the bloody ash of the bloody um, smoke box. And he shook his bloody hand at me. So when his twitch got me into the, into the run round, his mate on top, James the point, you're down there, the point you want to be done by hand. They want the smoke going in from automatic working. And um, his mate jumped off, changed the five points. The old mate would give the old driver a check, you know. Points are changed and you check the points. The young one picked her bloody two of them were taking it all time. under a bloody tape plan out of, well, there's one there and there's one upstairs. He got to have a portable one. Guess what happened to it? <laughs> on the right. bloody train, when I got to uh, med, not medicine for work properly, I was out the window holding me bloody, what's thing like this, we call them, got the tape going for the start of the engine to get away. And guess what happened? The bloody plastic handle broke. <laughs> I was left with a bloody, <laughs> I was left with a bloody bit of black idol, and the recorder was down on the track bed, and the blokes that was in the bloody engine sheds down the outside were laughing their bloody heads off, because they knew what happened, and I knew the bloody bloke was, because I'm a member. <laughs> but I tell you what, when I come back down again, they picked my receiver up, it still worked, and in trouble I couldn't carry it by the head. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, in that bloody great big car park. That was the old shop. Yeah, it was out of all 
Aldershot. They uh, had all these buses in the car park at Aldershot, because it was Aldershot District Bumming Day, uh, from Bill Tutty's 503 bus. I've got a buggy somewhere of this old bus. And um, I took my two or three of them. And as soon as this bloody train came, came into Bunny Order Shop, I've done it, said four or eight on. It stopped quite a while the platform, so she must have probably had eight on. And as soon as he came in, and he started away, he was going, dirt, 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 with his bloody claxon. Because we were all looking to see what was going on with the driver was. I recognised who it was. And I was going, Steve! The same, you know, D.B. West. He was, he was working up a stopper. I think he come up from, um, I think he come up from, uh, oh. Uh, yeah, well, he's, he's a driver at Farnham. Yeah, I know he's a Farnham boy, yeah. The best one, yeah, was um, uh, Steve e. West. He was a Belgian, because I always used to have a laugh with him. His name being Steve West. My name's Dave Salmon. So what we used to say was, I don't want your, his name was Steve West. I'm Dave Salmon, and I said to old Steve one day, I said, don't forget Steve E. It's John West versus Dave Salmon. So you've got John West Salmon. <laughs> West was there, I was the Salmon. He always takes the piss out of me when he sees me and gives me a reminder of that. David Hay has, yeah. has created a, well, it's, it's, it's only in the, it's not published yet, but it's, it's in the making. It's, it, what he's done on his website is called David Salmon Railway Photographer, I think it's called. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, and he's put some lovely photographs on there so Has far, he? yeah. Because he, a lot of them are at the depots which you visited in 1968. Yeah. You know, up in the... I Broadway, went in the the yeah. That's that time, Newcastle. That's Sunderland, the Welsh, the, the Welsh, once we went to the Welsh depots, um, all the steam had gone. It was just a desolated engine shed, you know, water towers, turn tables, you could see where the old crew rooms were, the men, you know, and bits and pieces. But the main thing we wanted to see was the steam, you know, we saw the roundhouse shed, some of the roundhouses, well, oh, roundhouse uh, turn, turn tables, um, in the Midland region, with uh, some of the North Eastern, I was picking around there, and I wasn't working on the railway then, I would get a bloody privilege, kicking you all free kick. I was working on the council then, you know, to pay full bloody fare. I used to go out of Houston, up to Manchester a lot of times, on them um, Midland region, E, not E, 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 a number of Dave's photographs, along with his ramblings, were then included in my second book, Further Ramblings of Railwaymen, which had its launch at the Guildford Museum in November 2012. Also, one of Dave's photographs, USA Class 30072 was selected and etched onto the Guildford MPD plaque which commemorated the 50th anniversary of the end of steam and the closure of Guildford Motive Power Depot. A fitting tribute to Dave Salmon, a man in his camera.